But Mordecai, having perceived what was done, tore his garments, put on sackcloth, and sprinkled dust upon himself. Having rushed forth through the open street of the city, he cried with a loud voice, A nation that has done no wrong is going to be destroyed. He came to the king's gate and stood, for it was not lawful for him to enter into the palace wearing sackcloth and ashes. And in every province where the letters were published, there was crying, lamentation, and great mourning on the part of the Jews. They wore sackcloth and ashes. The queen's maids and chamberlains went in and told her, and when she had heard what was done, she was deeply troubled. She sent clothes to Mordecai to replace his sackcloth, but he refused. So Esther called for her chamberlain Hathach, who waited upon her, and she sent to learn the truth from Mordecai. Mordecai showed him what was done, and the promise which Haman had made the king of ten thousand talents to be paid into the treasury, that he might destroy the Jews. And he gave him the copy of what was published in Susa concerning their destruction to show to Esther, and told him to charge her to go in and entreat the king and to beg him for the people. Remember, he said, the days of your humble condition, how you were nursed by my hand, because Haman, who holds the next place to the king, has spoken against us to cause our death. Hold upon the Lord and speak to the king concerning us to deliver us from death. So Hathach went in and told her all these words. Esther said to Hathach, Go to Mordecai, and say, All the nations of the empire know that any man or woman who goes into the king into the inner court without being called. A person must die. Unless the king stretches out his golden scepter, then he shall live. I haven't been called to go into the king for thirty days. So Hathach reported to Mordecai all the words of Esther. Then Mordecai said to Hathach, Go, and say to her, Esther, don't say to yourself that you alone will escape in the kingdom more than all the other Jews. For if you keep quiet on this occasion, help and protection will come to the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Who knows if you have been made queen for this occasion? And Esther sent the messenger who came to her to Mordecai, saying, Go and assemble the Jews that are in Susa, and all of you fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, night and day. My maidens and I will also fast, and I will go into the king contrary to the law, even if I must die. So Mordecai went and did all that Esther commanded him. He prayed to the Lord, making mention of all the works of the Lord. He said, Lord God, you are king ruling over all, for all things are in your power, and there is no one who can oppose you in your purpose to save Israel, for you have made the heaven and the earth and every wonderful thing under heaven. You are Lord of all, and there is no one who can resist you, Lord. You know all things. You know, Lord, that it is not in insolence, nor arrogance, nor love of glory, that I have done this, to refuse to bow down to the arrogant Haman, for I would gladly have kissed the soles of his feet for the safety of Israel. But I have done this that I might not set the glory of man above the glory of God. I will not worship anyone except you, my Lord, and I will not do these things in arrogance. And now, O Lord God, the King, the God of Abraham, spare your people, for our enemies are planning our destruction, and they have desired to destroy your ancient inheritance. Do not overlook your people, whom you have redeemed for yourself out of the land of Egypt. Listen to my prayer. Have mercy on your inheritance and turn our mourning into gladness, that we may live and sing praise to your name, O Lord. Don't utterly destroy the mouth of those who praise you, O Lord. All Israel cried with all their might, for death was before their eyes. And Queen Esther took refuge in the Lord, being taken as it were in the agony of death. Having taken off her glorious apparel, she put on garments of distress and mourning. Instead of grand perfumes, she filled her head with ashes and dung. She greatly humbled her body, and she filled every place of her glad adorning with her tangled hair. She implored the Lord God of Israel, and said, O oh my Lord, you alone are our king. Help me. I am destitute, and have no helper but you, for my danger is near at hand. I have heard from my birth in the tribe of my kindred that you, Lord, took Israel out of all the nations, and our fathers out of all their kindred for a perpetual inheritance, and have done for them all that you have said. And now we have sinned before you, and you have delivered us into the hands of our enemies, because we honored their gods. You are righteous, O Lord. But now they have not been content with the bitterness of our slavery, but have laid their hands on the hands of their idols, to abolish the decree of your mouth, and utterly to destroy your inheritance, and to stop the mouth of those who praise you, and to extinguish the glory of your house and your altar, and to open the mouth of the Gentiles to speak the praises of vanities, and that a mortal king should be admired forever. O oh Lord, don't surrender your scepter to those who don't exist, and don't let them laugh at our fall, but turn their counsel against themselves, and make an example of him who has begun to injure us. Remember us, O oh Lord, manifest yourself in the time of our affliction. Encourage me, O oh King of gods, and ruler of all dominion. Put harmonious speech into my mouth before the lion, and turn his heart to hate him who fights against us, to the utter destruction of those who agree with him. 
but deliver us by your hand and help me who am alone and have no one but you. O Lord, you know all things and know that I hate the glory of transgressors and that I abhor the bed of the uncircumcised and of every stranger. You know my necessity, for I abhor the symbol of my proud station, which is upon my head in the days of my splendor. I abhor it as a menstruous cloth, and I don't wear it in the days of my tranquility. Your handmaid has not eaten at Haman's table, and I have not honored the banquet of the king, neither have I drunk wine of libations. Neither has your handmaid rejoiced since the day of my promotion until now, except in you, O Lord God of Abraham. O God, who has power over all, listen to the voice of the desperate, and deliver us from the hand of those who devise mischief. Deliver me from my fear. It came to pass on the third day, when she had ceased praying, that she took off her servant's dress and put on her glorious apparel. Being splendidly dressed and having called upon God the overseer and preserver of all things, she took her two maids, and she leaned upon one as a delicate female, and the other followed bearing her train. She was blooming in the perfection of her beauty. Her face was cheerful and looked lovely, but her heart was filled with fear. Having passed through all the doors, she stood before the king. He was sitting on his royal throne. He had put on all his glorious apparel, covered all over with gold and precious stones, and was very terrifying. And having raised his face resplendent with glory, he looked with intense anger. The queen fell and changed her color as she fainted. She bowed herself upon the head of the maid who went before her. But God changed the spirit of the king to gentleness, and in intense feeling, he sprang from off his throne and took her into his arms until she recovered. He comforted her with peaceful words and said to her, What is the matter? Esther, I am your relative. Cheer up. You shall not die, for our command is openly declared to you, draw near. And having raised the golden scepter, he laid it upon her neck and embraced her. He said, Speak to me. So she said to him, I saw you, my Lord, as an angel of God, and my heart was troubled for fear of your glory. For you, my Lord, had to be wondered at, and your face is full of grace. While she was speaking, she fainted and fell. Then the king was troubled, and all his servants comforted her. The king said, What do you desire, Esther? What is your request? Ask even to the half of my kingdom, and it shall be yours. Esther said, Today is a special day. So if it seems good to the king, let both him and Haman come to the feast which I will prepare this day. The king said, Hurry and bring Haman here, that we may do as Esther said. So they both came to the feast about which Esther had spoken. At the banquet, the king said to Esther, What is your request? Queen Esther, you shall have all that you require. She said, My request and my petition is, If I have found favor in the king's sight, let the king and Haman come again tomorrow to the feast which I shall prepare for them, and tomorrow I will do as I have done today. So Haman went out from the king very glad and merry, but when Haman saw Mordecai the Jew in the court, he was greatly enraged. Having gone into his own house, he called his friends and his wife Seresh. He showed them his wealth and the glory with which the king had invested him, and how he had promoted him to be chief ruler in the kingdom. Haman said, The queen has called no one to the feast with the king but me, and I am invited tomorrow. But these things don't please me while I see Mordecai the Jew in the court. And Zeresh his wife and his friends said to him, Let a fifty cubit tall gallows be made for you. In the morning you speak to the king, and let Mordecai be hanged on the gallows, that you go into the feast with the king, and be married. The same pleased Haman, and the gallows was prepared. Chapter 6 The Lord removed sleep from the king that night, so he told his servant to bring in the books, the registers of daily events, to read to him. And he found the records written concerning Mordecai, how he had told the king about the king's two chamberlains, when they were keeping guard, and sought to lay hands on Ahasuerus. The king said, What honor or favor have we done for Mordecai? The king's servants said, You haven't done anything for him. And while the king was inquiring about the kindness of Mordecai, behold, Haman was in the court. The king said, Who was in the court? Now Haman had come in to speak to the king about hanging Mordecai on the gallows which he had prepared. The king's servants said, Behold, Haman stands in the court. And the king said, Call him. The king said to Haman, What should I do for the man whom I wish to honor? Haman said within himself, Who would the king honor but myself? He said to the king, As for the man whom the king wishes to honor, let the king's servants bring the robe of fine linen which the king puts on, and the horse on which the king rides, and let him give it to one of the king's noble friends, and let him dress the man whom the king loves. Let him mount him on the horse, and proclaim through the streets of the city, saying, This is what will be done for every man whom the king honors. Then the king said to Haman, You have spoken well. Do so for Mordecai the Jew, who waits in the palace, and let not a word of what you have spoken be neglected. So Haman took the robe and the horse, dressed Mordecai, mounted him on the horse, and went through the streets of the city, proclaiming, This is what would be done for every man whom the king wishes to honor. Then Mordecai returned to the palace, but Haman went home mourning, with his head covered. Haman related the events that had happened to him to Zeresh his wife and to his friends. His friends and his wife said to him, If Mordecai is of the race of the Jews, and you have begun to be humbled before him, you will assuredly fall, and you will not be able to withstand him, for the living God is with him. 
While they were still speaking, the Chamberlains arrived to rush Hammond to the banquet which Esther had prepared.